All right, guys, today's video, I'm gonna be installing a weighted shift knob on the G80 M3 manual transmission. Uh, the reason why these are really good, it actually helps, especially if your transmission is a little notchy and a little stiff and you don't, you know, some of these uh, manual gearboxes today, are, you know, they're not as good as some other cars. Like Porsche does a great job. Uh, the gated Ferraris and Lamborghinis, those all, all have a very, very unique feel. And even a lot of the Hondas and import cars have a really good feel. Um, so on the BMW, what I wanted, first off, we have black Alcantara, which matches the Alcantara on the sports seats, FYI. This knob weighs about one pound. Uh, I believe it's made out of stainless steel, and then they do a matte powder-coated finish. Now, the BMW M3s and most BMWs, they don't have a threaded shift knob. They have a press fit that you have to pull up, and I'm going to show you that in a couple of moments. And the way the Billet Works knob goes on, we have a billet aluminum threaded adapter. This is going to slide onto the OEM shifter shaft. We have four set screws that are about 2.5 millimeters. We're going to put some Loctite blue on those set screws. We're going to line it up. We're going to take the factory knob off. We're going to remove the factory knob from the factory leather boot and trying to retain the plastic collar that keeps it all together. Uh, and then once it's all back into the car, it's going to feel great. So we'll also go for a little bit of a test drive when we're done. It's really going to take you maybe 15, 20 minutes to do the whole process. Um, and I did a Billet Works weighted knob on the GT350R. I loved it. The problem why I took it off that car was it was a little bit too big. And in order to use the shift knob on the GT350s, you have a pull-up collar. And it makes the base really, really large. So you're very limited to what shift knob style you could do on a GT350. But this particular one has got the same ball diameter of a gated Ferrari. And that's kind of like what I wanted. It feels better in your hands. Uh, and I think it's going to be a really, really nice little upgrade uh, to get the manual shifting to feel even smoother. So it's basic physics. We have greater weight on the shifter stock, which is going to require less effort to go in and out of the shifter gate. Okay, so it's supposed to make the shifting easier, smoother, less notchy, and these things are proven to work. Uh, there's no degradation to the gearbox or anything mechanical in the car. This is really just basically, uh, you're just changing the physics. So by having the extra weight, that's almost like putting extra force into the shift knob, which you don't really necessarily want to do. Then it makes driving the car a little bit uncomfortable. So let's get over to the car right now. Let's remove the factory shift knob. Then I'm going to show you how to take the knob and separate it from the factory boot. And then we're going to get this thing installed and we're going to go for a quick right, drive. Guys, regarding removal process, it's very, very simple. So you take the leather on the boot and you just lift up just like that. Now you just release the boot. Now this is a press fit. There's no threaded uh, fixture on here. We're gonna be putting a threaded adapter on here. So what you gotta do, I like to heat these up and then I just take a thick towel, place it over and I pull so you don't smash yourself in the face. So I'm just gonna show you real quick how it gets done. So use the heat gun on like a medium setting. It'll just help the plastic and everything expand inside the shifter shaft. Just wanna get it warm. side pull it back and grab it with both hands if you can and there it goes you just pop it right out so by using the heat it makes it a hell of a lot easier I didn't smash myself in the face but definitely put a towel over what you're doing in case you go and you could kind of smash yourself right in the teeth so you're definitely not going to want to do that so you can just see it here so what we have to do we have to take off the factory shift knob. Let's give you a little bit of a close up. You see these plastic? It looks like it's plastic welded right there. So we're gonna have to break that free. Uh, this is the bottom side of the boot close up. So it looks like, I'll just mark it out here. It looks like these two plastic ends are like plastic welded to this section right here. So we're gonna try to heat it up and uh, break it free. So, I just want to make sure. See, this looks like it, it's, it's a little tab that's pressed in there. But I don't know if that collar is part of the actual shifter. Yeah, you see, this is definitely plastic welded. I could see it as it's coming free. So, you just take a little flathead screwdriver like that, bend the tabs out a little bit. Okay, you can kind of see what I'm doing. 
Okay. Bingo. That's it. So that's how the factory knob. So the collar we're most likely not going to be reusing. Uh, this is just the way the knob came off. So those little tabs go through that collar and they're like peened over a plastic welder. So even if you wanted to put this back, you could very easily just take a, a soldering iron tip and heat it up so it peens it over and you're good to go. So we're just gonna clean this up. Just go through here. Okay, so that's that. These are the two little ends that were peened over. So let's just do a little test fit on the bench. So this most likely is gonna not go through there. Okay, so now we see we have another issue. Uh, I'm probably gonna have to just bore this out very easily. I'm just gonna open up this hole. Nice and easy. Yeah, I think this is a better option than trying to use a drill bit or a unibit. It goes slow. All right, guys, so we're pretty much just finished with the Dremel, so we're gonna put this in from the bottom. Okay, you see how we carefully massage it in, and I kind of want this to be tight. Okay, there we go. Okay, you kind of see what we just did? So that's exactly what we want, and then we're gonna get the new shifter she's gonna screw on just like this and this is how the assembly is gonna look when it's in the car so let's get over to car right now and get it installed all right guys so before we do the installation we're gonna do a little Loctite blue on the four set screws just to give it a little bit more security because these things are machined there's a little bit of a tolerance in there we don't want these to come loose so just remove one by one put a little dab all right, guys, so we're over in the cabin of the car. Make sure your set screws are not all the way in. So it's gonna go just like that. And we're gonna tighten up all four set screws. You know, we're gonna torque them down to a pretty good spec. You know, you want them tight. So it's actually a really clever adapter system that they have for these cars that have that press fit knob. Okay, so let me just show you quick. So there's the knob without the boot. Yeah, you could feel it already. It feels, it feels better. So what we're gonna do, we have to make sure we put the boot on in the right orientation. Um, let me see. So we got the clips there and there. So it looks like it only could go one way. But let me just make sure. You just take your boot, you snap it in, just like that, and that's it. So what we want to do is we want we don't want the billet shaft to be visible. So we're just gonna get that screwed on. Just like that. Okay. And there we go. There's the billet works knob installed. So let's go uh, take it for a quick test drive. And we'll see how well it goes into first, second, and third. Those are the three gears that seem to be the hardest for a lot of people that complain about these BMW manuals. But I can tell you right now, just sitting here, it feels way better. All right, guys, we'll just go for a little drive. Uh, as you saw in the video, I wasn't happy with the height of the shift knob. So I milled out the height, I bored it out, and I beveled it so it actually sits about five-eighths of an inch lower when I personally feel it's absolutely perfect right now here. And I'm gonna show you, it's like real easy. Two fingers. With 
much, much less effort. Uh, it feels smoother. There's no NVH. I love the way it feels in my hand. I definitely think, like I said, if anybody doesn't love the OEM shift knob, uh, there are a lot of possibilities of you guys just buying something aftermarket and modifying it or making it work on your G80 or any other car you own. But so far, I really like uh, the improvement. It feels better. Uh, it definitely goes into gear better. Less vibration when I'm at a stoplight with the knob, you know, vibrating because we have a, a you know one pound solid mass right here. The Alcantara feels great. So all in all, it's a win-win. And um, I definitely recommend it for anybody who's got a six-speed manual uh, M3 or M4 because, like I said, they feel a little notchy, a little rubbery. They're not the best shifters. Another issue with these shifters are the rear bushings on the actual control mechanism of the shifter assembly. Uh, it's got a real sloppy bushing right underneath the tunnel where the drive shaft is. And I don't know if anybody that makes a polyurethane bushing yet, but uh, I may explore something in that realm as far as coming up with something and making something and selling it. We'll see. But other than that, it feels great. The next video that I'm going to show you guys on the Auto Fanatic channel, I imported the highest flowing, also the most expensive flat panel filters to go into the factory air box. I've been looking at different air intake systems for a while, you know, ranging from like 1500 up to 4000. Uh, and then when you look at the performance numbers for the investment, you know, they're claiming seven to 10 horsepower. Uh, that's a lot of money for such a small gain. So I figured I'll discuss it more in the upcoming video uh, by removing the charcoal filters and putting the highest flowing race filter in the factory design system. You know, the BMW spent a lot of money designing and engineering everything for heat soak and flow and all of that. I think it's gonna make, probably pick up at least 10 horsepower and it didn't cost me $3,000. Uh, because I don't really care about all that fancy stuff under the hood. Uh, it just doesn't add any value to this car uh, or, or myself. I just, I'm not into that stuff. Um, if it was like a vintage car, more show quality type of car, yeah, then I would kind of go crazy with all the bells and whistles and all the fluff under the hood. But for now, that's gonna work out great. So, so far the uh, the billet, billet Works knob is a great improvement and I highly recommend it. So if anybody's interested, check out their website. They have a bunch of different varieties of knobs. Not a sponsored video. I paid full retail for the knob and I actually liked the knob because I had one on my GT350, but I actually like it better in this car because of the size. On the GT350, it was a little bit too large because of the pull-up collar to go into reverse. But on this, feels perfect. I can shift the car look, with my thumb. Like I don't even have to like put a lot of effort into it. Uh, and it definitely makes shifting much more enjoyable and much easier to use. So thanks for watching this video. Stay tuned for more content on the G80 M3 and anything automotive that I'm working on, I will share with you guys in the channel. Also, if you guys aren't subscribed, please subscribe to the channel. Definitely appreciate that and definitely hit the like button. And uh, I'll see you guys in an upcoming video soon. Take care all.